Today's video was sponsored by Displate. Today I'm editing your submitted photos. We've got five very cool pics for today, so let's take a look at the first one. This one was sent by Amar and includes a very simple message. Can you edit this picture for me? I don't see why not. Let's turn this into like a serial killer because that seems fun. Uh, let's open up Photoshop. Okay, here we have our beautiful image. Let's put that right in the middle there so he's nicely centered. There you go. We have to cut him out. Like, it's it's that obvious. And you know how nitpicky I am. We just need the pen tool for this. Let's freaking go. And here he is, beautifully cut out. Let's make him a tad bigger again, like that. Perfect. And then I do actually want to go and use the ceiling light he's got here. So let's hide this and very softly paint on that area, just like so. So it kind of fades out into nothingness. And this is, of course, the part that has to stay very bright. There you go. And using this lens flare from my Optics Plus collection, I will make some light coming from that very bright light source. And paint over that just a little bit. There you go. Nice and shiny. Beautiful. Now let's see. We do have to make sure his face in the background is hidden because this looks a bit strange, of course. Now using some color balance, let's make it a bit more bluish so it matches the tones on him because he has a bit of blue in it. Now I'm going to use some actual smoke overlays, these right here, to uh, hopefully get a bit of atmosphere going just on top here then I'm going to hide that again this really is just constantly the exact same thing putting something in then hiding it and then painting it back again <laughs> now let's make some shadows let's start right here adding a bit of darkening to the areas that are in the shadow that are not being lit by the light source above of course the room he was standing in before was way brighter so of course the light scatters all over the place we don't have that now because this is dark as hell. See, this right here is already a very big difference. And a little bit of a rim light on this side since the light, I think, is hitting that just around the corner there. Of course, we're gonna have to add some actual highlights manually, but this is just erasing the shadows because it's a bit too much, I think. There you go. Well, then let's get into those highlights. It's literally the exact same thing as before, except now we make stuff lighter instead of darker. It's... <laughs> Pretty straightforward, not gonna lie. I am mostly making this side a bit brighter. I feel like it needs some of that really intense light. Here you go. This already looks a lot better, actually. Tiny rim light on his arm and his watch. Very nice. And even a tiny bit on this side as well. I think it's it's kind of random just doing stuff I think would look right. I'm not sure if this is technically realistic, but we're going for that more artistic vibe anyway. So it's fine. It's fine. Here you go. Big difference, big difference. Then I will fade him out on the bottom just a little bit to make sure he's really integrated with the background because it's very hazy after all. It doesn't look it yet, but uh, that's the idea. There you go, kind of like this. We do need to add some more of that smokiness. Maybe something like this could help with that. I'm not sure. Maybe hmm, over, like on top of him. There you go. I don't know why. I don't know how this makes sense, but I feel like this could potentially look pretty badass. That is not so bad. I Again, I don't know how that makes sense, but it does look pretty sick. Maybe also a little bit on his shoulder on the other side here. Oh, yes. That is pretty cool though, isn't it? I like that. And let's add some brightening up here to make it very intense, like very bright. Here you go. Oh. Oh, my friends, I like where this is going. Regular viewers of my channel know that this is going to need some particles. So let's put some particles just right on top there. This is again from my Optics Plus library. If you want to get that, check the link down below in the description. Let's put that right here, then hide it. Again, the same exact thing. Hide it and paint it back. Here you go. Nice and subtle. This I shouldn't do too intense because it still has to be very eerie and subtle. Yes, dude. Check that out. Oh, that's sick. I'm curious to see what happens if we put a table behind him, like right about here. Very subtle, so we have to hide it like a lot. So first we have to obviously make it very dark, something like that. And then just kind of erase it like a lot, like, like this, so it's barely even visible, even more, like so. Yes. I like that. You can barely tell it's a table, but I still like it. Let's put some blood on there. Just right there on top, very subtle. Oh, I love that. Look at that. Oh, that's... That's great. Okay, we need to add some blood on this guy as well. Here I have this thing. Let's put that on multiply. Oh my god, <laughs> that is gruesome as hell. Look at that on his neck. Yes, that's perfect. Let's do that. I'm not so sure about this stuff on his shoulder, but the neck area I really like. Here you go. That is a... Pr <laughs> Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I like it, though. That looks pretty sick. Time to put some more in. Here you go. <laughs> is it a problem that I like this stuff so much? I think it is. I think at this point, I'm a psychopath. Right here, let's put this stuff on his arm there. There you go. There you go. You know what? I feel like we shouldn't overdo this one. Like, this is pretty good, and I don't really know what to add. 
other than, you know, a camera raw filter. Let's see what we can do in here. It definitely has to be nice and sharp. Something like, uh, like this, I think, isn't so bad. I want to make that light very creepy. Something like, what if we make that a bit blue? Oh my god, dude, look at that. Oh, that is actually super creepy. I love that. Maybe one last thing I want to add is an iris blur. I barely ever do this, but it just has a nice effect, I think, for this. I feel like that could make it a bit more claustrophobic for this one. I like that sort of effect. There you go. I feel like this has potential. Let's just do that. Hit OK. And then I guess that's it. I really, really like this one. It's extremely simplistic, but still, I like it. That's nice for change. Back to the studio. Now, today's sponsor, one of my favorites, Displays. I myself am a huge movie and pop culture fan, so of course posters are gonna be a very big appeal to me. Displate is a premium brand that makes metal wall prints, created by both individual artists like myself and big franchises like Star Wars, Marvel, DC and Harry Potter. They have an insane amount of awesome designs ready to hang up your wall. Honestly, the quality and feel are great, it's very unique, it's very different from other more standard posters. Their mounting system is super convenient. as you simply stick a protective leaf on your wall, then stick a magnet to it and boom, it's on your wall and easily swappable. I've had these hanging here since the new studio and I love them. This plate really is all about community. It brings both the collector and the artist together to share cool designs. And all that while helping the environment because for every display sold, one tree is planted. As you may know, I've been selling my own designs on display for a while now and some even became side-wide bestsellers, which I'm super excited about. I never really sold prints anywhere else and probably won't because I simply love how they're unique compared to other standard prints. Also, you too can apply as an artist on display and start selling. It's December, the season of giving, I like to say. If you want to support this channel and get an extra 20% off your next display, use the link down below on top to to do that. Big thanks for listening and to display of course for sponsoring this video. I am and will remain a big fan. If you want to send your own photo for a next episode, make sure to send it to editingyourphotos at bennyproductions.net. And of course, turn on notifications so you don't miss a single video. The next photo was sent in by Francesco and I really like this one. Hi Benny, I'm Francesco from Italy. Personally, I'm getting more and more passionate about your content. I'm slowly learning to use Photoshop. Who knows, maybe one day I'll become as good as you. You can choose one of these photos, thank you in advance. He sent a few, but this is the one I chose. I felt like this I could turn into a nice gateway in to Winter Wonderland or something, so let's go and do that. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are in Photoshop. Let's get straight into it. First, we need to cut this out, at least sort of, and this is gonna be a huge pain. I'm guessing we can just kind of start here and skip these plans here altogether, because let's be honest, that is never gonna work, like, ever. <laughs> okay, then let's make that a mask. That looks very strange, but uh, let's just try. First of all, for the background, I think this could work pretty well. So let's place that right about there, I suppose. Nicely into that snowy um, landscape. Dude, this is already looking so strange. What am I doing? I've barely even begun and I'm already losing hope. This could work, I feel like. It has potential. We're gonna have to get rid of this sunlight uh, here and there because it's a bit too intense, I feel like. There you go. Then let's add some of these shadows on here as well to kind of enhance that effect. I really hope this is gonna work. The idea is fun, but uh, well, let's give that a very cold kind of desaturated vibe to make it match the background. Something like this I think is pretty good. That's already a bit better, isn't it? Obviously the light is coming from behind, so we're gonna need some shadows in front here. But most of all highlights on the sides here to make sure that light from the back actually casts light onto the tree. Let's just get the boring stuff out of the way so we can move on to more fun stuff. Now what if to replace those branches up there we just add a bunch of new branches like these and put them somewhere up here. There you go. That definitely- yes, that works. I mean, it's not perfect, but I will just go with it because it's better than nothing for sure. Let's give this whole thing even more blue tones. Something like this, I think, could be nice. And I also think we could add some glow on top here already because it just gives a nice vibe, a nice effect. So let's just freaking go. Now inside this hole, there's gonna be a magical wonderland. So let's uh, cut out this hole first. Okay, there you go. Then let's remove that. And now we have a, uh, a beautiful hole. Let's remove the background from that. There you go. And now in there, we can make a very nice new little world. 
I guess. Let's first try putting in this image, see what that looks like. I want there to be some little houses, so I thought maybe uh, maybe this photo could work for that. Then let's, uh, yeah, let's just put them right here, I suppose. And we gotta fade this out into that same landscape, something like this, I think. Yeah, that's pretty good. I will add some glow, some uh, haze, some uh, mist, some whatever you want to call it. Just on the horizon there, very nice and shiny. Let's give this a very nice warm tone as well, like red and a bit of yellow maybe. Because of course, that is kind of the idea. Just what I wanted. Then on top, the very top, I will also add some glow. Because as you may have expected, we do need a bit of that edge glow on the tree itself, on the foreground. Now the light on the inside there obviously shines light onto that tree, so we need some of those highlights on the inside here to make it look, again, more realistic. What a boring, boring segment. Just the same thing over and over again. Again, I mean, that's pretty much my entire channel at this point. Now, I think to make the contrast of the whole difference between the outside world and the world inside the tree, um, maybe we can make the sides a bit darker again, and then also make that a bit more bluish and even colder and darker. One more thing is like an extra touch is maybe one of these uh, lampposts. I guess let's try and blend that in there. Let's make it a bit darker first. Then this top part right here, we have to make very bright, of course, because light is bright. Like that's kind of the point. Um, of light. Then let's add a little bit of glow on top here. Look at that. That is beautiful. Let's paint a nice orange glow onto the tree. Some nice orange light coming from that lantern, of course. I'm guessing something like that isn't too bad. That hmm, I'm not so sure about that, actually. I guess it's nice. You know what? Let's just go and see what happens if we add a camera raw filter. I'm just not so sure about this whole thing. It definitely didn't go as well as I thought it would. I'm guessing this is a tad better than it was before. Let's hit OK. Not sure about it, but I guess not everything can be perfect. Not everything always works exactly the way you want it. So I guess that's OK, too. Back to the studio then, I suppose. Our third image for today was sent in by Maverick. Hey Benny, watching your videos made me start editing photos myself. You're a big inspiration and a great platform to learn from. Thank you. The picture was taken on a medieval festival MPS in Germany and shows my ring wraith cosplay that I've been working on for two years now. The photo quality is not optimal, but maybe you can still bring some life into it. Or maybe rather death. Thank you very much. I myself am a big fan of Lord of the Rings, so let's see what we can do. This again all started, of course, with masking out this evil chap. Once I did, I noticed how terrible the sunlight had treated this image, so using curves, I tried fixing that. My idea was to get another Nazgul guy on the right, there you go, and a giant fell beast behind them like this. In the background, I wanted to have Mina as Morgul from the movies, of course, and literally just used a frame from the movie, because there was no way I was gonna find anything else for that. Besides, it was gonna be subtle anyways. This image made for a very nice color vibe, because this greenish-bluish tone I used throughout the whole image. I started matching the Nazgul with the background and did the same thing with the rocks I put on the bottom left. With a little bit of mist, I wanted to make it more creepy, and the background I gave a nice blur to hide the fact that it's pretty low quality. The highlights on these guys were pretty straightforward. The green color from that castle shines light on all of them, and that looks pretty cool. The Fell Beast was a whole different story though, as I actually needed to add proper shadows and everything. It took a while, but thankfully this worked decently enough in the end. the whole thing a little bit more dynamic, I thought let's put a very dim blue light source on the right, so we get this nice green slash blue split tone effect. I added this to both the Nazgul and the Fell Beast. I also made his eye a little glowy and orange, cause that's uh, cool, I suppose. Then I added some overall effects and glows to add some color pop. Thank you. 
something I thought would go nicely with that eye color is sparks. In the foreground, I added some sparky overlays from my own overlay pack, and that had a great effect if you ask me. I enhanced it with a bit of lighting and glow, and now we have three light sources instead. Now it was time to add a camera raw filter to make sure everything pops a bit more and get some clarity and sharpening. After that, I called it good. Pretty sick this one, nice and dark, just the way I like it. Uh, back to the studio then. Now usually this is where the video ends, but today I've actually got two more for you. Let's dive in. This next one is from Akum. Hey Benny, it's Akum here. I've been watching your videos for quite a while now and really helped me to get some great ideas about Photoshop. Here's a picture of my cosplay from the anime Ju Jujutsu Kaisen. Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> I hope you can make something with it. Lots of love. Thank you very much. I had to do some googling on what uh, Jujutsu Kaisen exactly is, but I think this is the character in question. Let's try and make this look epic. Here we are, of course, we need to cut him out, so let's start doing that and get it over with. And there you go. Beautiful. Now let's go and put this guy on a sort of an angle right about here. I believe this to be a, a screenshot from the show, so let's go and use this as a background. Let's very quickly cut this out as well. Let's fill up this tiny corner here. We need a sky, so let's go and use this. Here you go, something like that. Beautiful. This is one dramatic sky though. Let's make that a bit darker so it matches the rest of the image. There you go. Add some blue to it as well. Oh, and then this stuff in the background, let's make that very nice and vibrant, like very bluish, like this. Yes. Let's make it a bit hazy by adding a, a haze. Because, you know. What's far more important, however, is highlights. Because, of course, the background does cast some light onto this guy. Just like this. And then hide it again, like so. Yeah, this really is a lot of work, actually. Not gonna lie, though. This already looks a lot cooler than it did before. Look. Now I want to add some blur to the background to see what that looks like. Here you go. Something like this. I actually like that. That's hit okay. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like it would be great if it's raining here. So let's try that and see what happens. For that, I'm again using some of my own overlay. So let's put this on screen, make it very big. Now we're gonna need a ton of these and also blur a bunch of them to make sure the depth really is going on there. I also have this more subtle one to put in the background. Already looks pretty damn rainy, but I feel like we can use even more. Just a little bit right here like that, because we do of course need to have that interaction with the rain and this guy. Once again, this is also from my overlays pack, so be sure to check the link down below to check those out. I really like this, actually. I barely ever make rainy images. In fact, I don't remember making one like ever. I'm also adding some really subtle darkening on his shoulders here to make it look like the cloth is actually like wet. And now for the main kind of idea of this image is of course the fire in his hand. I think that is what I gathered from the images. So I'm going to use this flame thingy in his hand here to, uh, to, to do that. Kind of like this. I'm not, that looks a bit, looks a bit, um, a bit strange. It does. Nah, I mean, it's not too bad. Let's try adding a glow and see what that looks like. Just very subtle on top here. And of course, that shines light onto his face. So let's try and add that as well. Just like so, a bit of blue light shining on there. And well, then let's check out and see what happens if we add a camera raw filter. Like the blue on his face just went a bit overboard and now we're at a point where it can't really be fixed. Wait a minute. I don't know about this. It's, it's okay, but it's not great by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> and I'm not even really sure why. It started out pretty great, but then it just went south real, real fast all of a sudden. But uh, anyway, on to the next one. <laughs> then to top it all off, this last image for today is sent by Shakiro. The name is Mason, Shakiro by nickname if that's easier to say. I'm a huge fan of your artwork, which in fact is also a huge source of inspiration for my own photoshops. Here are some photo shoot photos of mine. You can edit anything on them as you like. Best regards, a fellow fan, Shakiro. Very cool. I haven't personally seen Attack on Titan, but I do sort of know what it's about. So uh, I, we're just gonna try and see what happens, really. First off, I popped in Shakiro right in the middle there. I then instantly filled up the whole bloody place with buildings, a ton of buildings. Somehow, I believed it to be a good idea to make the whole street manually. I started adding an orange tint to all the houses because I found that this is the primary vibe of Attack on Titan.
In the back, I put the wall and added some small detail to it, because without it, it seems a bit too boring, I guess. Then I dropped in a nice sky and made sure it matched the rest of the image's vibe. I wanted this tree to be misty as hell, so I began painting some of that in the background. It didn't do wonders for it, but it would improve later on. Now, time to make the subject and the buildings look a little more integrated with the whole thing. I started adding lighting all over the place, considering the new light source I had put straight in the middle there. Not great, not terrible, so I also added these highlights to Shakiro. This definitely helped making the whole thing a bit more cohesive. I thought, you know, maybe it's nice to put some titans in here as well, and then I found this thing, which I think is called an armored titan. I'm sorry to fans of Attack on Titan if this image makes absolutely zero sense, but I am doing it anyway. <laughs> I spent some time on making those look a bit better, but soon I realized they would always have this sort of cartoony vibe. I guess I had just accepted that. Then I thought, what could possibly make this look more epic? Fire. I again put some fire and sparks in the foreground there, and after realizing that's cool as heck, I decided to also put some of that in various places in the background, because why not? Clearly this place is under attack. Towards the end, I added a camera raw filter, and that was pretty much it then. I can't lie, this is definitely not my favorite work by any stretch, but given the fact that I made this in under an hour, I am okay with it. Overall, it does look pretty nice, I guess. Back to the studio. And there you go. Again, if you want to send your photo, make sure to send it to editingyourphotos at bennyproductions.net and turn on notifications and subscribe and like this video. <laughs> Oh god. Also, huge thanks to Displate for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check the link down below to get that really nice 20 or 30% off if you're interested. And then I guess for today, that is it. If you like this video, please do share it with a few friends. Like, and then I guess, I hope I'll see you in my next video. Ah, oh, that is bad.